Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ The people who believe they are the most ardent and strongest in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is it that we can't say, I love you Allah? Why is it that we can't think of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because love is not just something you say. right? You can't just say, I love you to someone. It's not really... Love is a very strong emotion. right? You don't want to be saying that to people just for the sake of it. right? Because then it just sounds fake. Because love, you know, when you have love for something, you do everything for it. Love literally blinds you and deafens you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallama tasliman kathiran ila yawmiddin amma ba'd Qala Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Majid wa al-Furqan al-Hamid wa al-lazina amanu ashaddu hubban lillah Sadaqallahu al-Azim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has created us and then he manages the affairs of the world. And part of the management of the affairs of this world is that he provides for us and he sustains us. He takes care of us. He provides the facilities within which we operate, the environment in which we live. He provides us the capabilities of breathing, eating, drinking, sustaining ourselves, of thinking, of getting by in this life, of assisting others and allowing others to assist us, of doing things for ourselves and doing things for others, by doing business and trade to provide a living for ourselves and to provide facilities and goods and merchandise and things that what other people need, that's what humans produce. Humans are a collective community, a social community that assists one another and that, that care for one another and that cater for one another. Uh, sometimes within all of that, within thinking about ourselves and thinking about others, uh, whether that mean that be through compassionate means or that be through trade or business, we sometimes forget the one who's giving it to us all, the one who's providing everything, the one who's facilitating everything, the one whom we're here because he wanted us to be here and he decided that we would be here as opposed to someone else. So by this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to not forget him. So he tells us that you pray at least five times a day. And aqimi salata li dhikri. Establish the prayer for my remembrance. So we focus on the prayer. But the prayer is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remember him. So it's actually to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense that He is our creator and that's where ultimately we're going to return to Him as well. Now, the interesting thing here is that the more you know about something, the more you become attracted to it. The more you know about something, as long as it has good qualities, you become attracted to it. So for example, if you're looking for a car or a house, you find a house, you're looking for a house, you see many and you dismiss many of them. Why would you dismiss many houses? In fact, when you start looking for a house, you start looking online for listings. That's the new way of doing it. Before, you'd have to drive around a neighborhood and um, see where the for sale boards are. Nowadays, you do it from the comfort of your own home, from your phone, and uh, they show you pictures and everything. You will dis probably dismiss many of them just by looking at them. And then there's a few that you'll single out that these are worth going to see. Because if you were to look at every house that's available in that area, I mean, there's so many houses. So you go and you look at them. And then as soon as you look at them, you make a decision whether it's something that you want or not. It's a big decision. Now, if there's one or two that catch your interest, then there's still a number of other hurdles that you have to overcome. But why did they catch your interest is the question. They caught your interest because they have features that attract you that your heart inclines towards, that your heart begins to like. You like those things. And the more feature that house will, will have, then the more infatuated you will become with that house. And then you'll be really 
sad if you were to lose it. You'll fear losing it, in fact. And then it becomes a bidding process of who pays the most, especially if it's a competitive market. Then why are people w willing to pay so much more? They say that if you're going to buy a house to live in, then you, you, you'll pay more because you're going to live in there forever and the price will eventually appreciate. If you're buying something for investment, then you know you have to try to get the best price because it's an investment, you're trying to maximize your profits. But here your profit is you're living in there. So why do we bid more? Why do we go after something? Why do we make such an effort behind it? It's because the qualities of that house, as opposed to other houses or other homes, have attracted us. Similarly, when you want to buy a, when you want to buy a, a phone, Phones are much more of an easier purchase than a car, for example, or than a house. You could even make a mistake in a phone. You'd lose a, you'd, you might lose a bit of money and you may have to resell the phone if you don't like it. But when it comes to a car and other things, it just gets more complicated. But again, it's the same thing. If I've identified one car that I need, because I had to get rid of my car for you less purposes, you know, to, uh, so that you don't get charged every day for the, the environment tax or whatever they've put on the cars. So now I found the car that I'm interested in. Why am I interested in that car? Because it seems to fit the criteria I'm looking for. It has the qualities and characteristics that interest me. That's why I've singled out that car. It has seven seats and it's this, that and the other and it has those, those few things. But there's a few other things that I would have liked to have but it doesn't have that. But I'm willing to I'm willing to overlook those things because it has, because there's no car that has everything. Unless you want to buy a brand new car and you want to order it. Even then you may not get 100% everything, but we are limited in terms of how much you can pay. It's only in paradise where you can literally want whatever you want and have it designer, you know, designed to exact specification and there's, no, and there's no want for money there. There's no want for cash there because our rewards inshallah will be very, very valuable in the hereafter, our good deeds once we get into paradise. But here you get a budget you have to worry about as well. So now what happens is that there's a few characteristics and now suddenly somebody tells you about another car, an alternative. Until now your whole mind was focused on this car. You'd literally, as they say, حُبُّ الشَّيْءِ يُعْمِي وَيُسِمْ Right, the love of something blinds and deafens you. So you didn't want to look at any, it's too confusing. Right? That's why you don't look at others. It's too confusing. You know, you want to focus on what your object of your, your desire. When somebody tells you, you really need to check this car out, so you start looking at it curs in a cursory way. And there are certain features that stand out to you. And they attract you. So you go and you take a test drive. You know, a friend's friend has one, so you go and you really like it. So now it's between these two cars now. And then what happens is that you finally decide it's this car because it has more going for it. There's more attraction in there because there's more characteristics that are attracting you compared to the other one. So then you decide to buy that car. Now, why did you get off the other car? Because you found an alternative. Number one, you found an alternative. Why was that alternative better than that? It wasn't an arbitrary decision, was it? You know, for somebody who thinks, it's not an arbitrary decision. I know one person, he needs a car. He literally went out, found the he needed a van, right? He found the first van, he found the first van within four hours and he went and bought it because he just needed a van, that's it. He didn't care what it was, it was the first van he bought, paid the money and took, took it and then he had to deal with whatever the consequences. Most people don't do that, do they? You don't just go and buy a car like that in four hours. Unless it's for 300 pounds or something, somebody's flogging it, you know. If it's a good amount of money, you're going to spend, you're going to think about it. So what attracted you to this one opposed to that one? Because it's a better alternative. It's got more characteristics. That means this had more shortcomings. Because if that has more characteristics, that means this has more shortcomings. Think about it that way. Right? It's a good car on its own. But when you've compared it, then for you, that has more going than that. Somebody else, this may have more than that. Right? Subhanallah, subhanallah. Now what happens is, this is the exact dilemma that I think we're dealing with when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that car that you, the two cars that you are now interested in, when you were interested in that first car, you started seeing that car everywhere. Before that, it didn't really exist. At least not in your scope of vision. It existed, there were many on the roads. But now that you're interested in it, you start seeing them everywhere. Where did they all spring up from? Right? Did they just suddenly supply them the day before and everybody bought them and now they're everywhere? No. They've been there from before, but we weren't bothering to look at them because they did not interest us. It was not, a form of, it was not an object of attraction until now. Now what happens is, when you found the second car, you see those more. And these ones you start seeing less again. They start going into oblivion. You'll still notice them. Because you're like still comparing and like, Alhamdulillah, I didn't get that one. You'll be feeling like, Alhamdulillah, I didn't get that one. So you'll still notice it. But it's the other one that you now start seeing everywhere. So now it's the same thing. It's the same kind of thing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason we can't see Allah, in a sense you can't see Him anyway, but the reason we can't even see His signs everywhere is because we're not interested. We don't, we're not interested, we've not attached our heart to Him. Why haven't we attached our heart to Him? If there's something good that it has a attraction, then you're going to attach your heart to it. Especially if it is really, really a strong attraction, a very strong attraction in there, then you can't help it. But as I said first, the reason why we didn't see the second car is because we had a focus on the first car. The reason why we didn't see those on the streets before is because we were not interested in it. We had an alternative. And the reason why then we have started focusing on the second car over the first car is because the second one attracted us and took our attraction away from the first one. Sometimes you've seen people making a bad decision, haven't you? Where they will completely abandon a good thing and take a bad thing for you don't understand why. But they do some reason. They have their own personal reasons. They, they will let go of some, a better deal and go for something inferior. Why would they do that? Maybe because of some, some weird idea, you know, some personal preference, maybe some wrong idea. Everybody's telling him, get that one. But the person make, made this decision. After five, six, seven, now we don't want to judge people's decision, but after five, six, seven years, they decided themselves that I made the wrong decision. I should not have married here. I should not have moved here. I should not have done this. I shouldn't have taken this job. I shouldn't have done this course. Maybe even after one year. Everybody was telling them something else. But they decide to go for something inferior. Are we deluded like that as well? Where the reason why we can't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reason why we can't experience Him everywhere is because we're just focused on other things too much. I guess the better example is that there's a responsibility that we have, that we better prepare for something. You know, you have to go for hajj or whatever, and you kept delaying it, delaying it, delaying it, because you're focused on something else. So I, um, I don't really want to take off work, or I want to do this first, or I want to uh, spend on this first, I want to get that new sofa set, I want to get that new uh, TV or whatever it is, then I'll go for hajj. That, is that a decision that we're taking? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ The people who believe they are the most ardent and strongest in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is it that we can't say, I love you Allah? Why is it that we can't think of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because love is not just something you say. right? You can't just say, I love you to someone. It's not really, love is a very strong emotion. You don't want to be saying that to people just for the sake of it, right? Because then it just sounds fake. Because love, you know, when you have love for something, you do everything for it. Love literally blinds you and deafens you. Now, what is love? You see, that's the thing. Uh, people have brothers and sisters, right? Now, you may just love one of your brothers and sisters more than the other. It doesn't mean that you have to be unfair to the others or you are unfair to the others. You just love one more than the other. Why? Because Allah has put that in your heart. You can't help it. You may love one of your children more than the others. You're equal, you, you treat them all well, but it's just one you love more than others. 
Those who have children will probably understand that. Which is the most beloved child generally? They say, there's a few contenders in this. They say the eldest one, because he's probably the first one. Then they say that the last one is always the most beloved. And he's the most, he or she is most beloved until the next one comes along. Then they become the most beloved. And the third candidate is the one who's sick. They become the most beloved for that moment as well. So where does that put the middle children? Anybody a middle child here? Don't feel too bad. <laughs> Subhanallah. I mean, you, we were the youngest at one time anyway, so alhamdulillah. So they say that the Prophet ﷺ treated all of his wives equally, nine at once. But he had Aisha radiallahu anha, he just had a natural love for her more than others. Just a natural love. Now that's placed by Allah. They call that in Arabic, they call that hub fitri. Right? They call that hub fitri. Natural love. You can't help it. It's an inherent natural love that you can't help. It's just, you love something. Now, the, the, the thing about this is that you could have inherent love for many things. Right? If it's good what you have inherent love for and it's something that love is called for, then alhamdulillah. Like, you know, we have to love our children, we have to love our parents, we have to love the Prophet ﷺ, we have to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody has an inherent love for Allah, and he just inclined towards the Prophet ﷺ and loves him as well, that's wonderful. You don't have to make an effort. It, it's already there. Because it's naturally there. But sometimes, you can't have, you don't have that. You don't have a natural love for something. You might even have an aversion, or you may just be non-committal. Just neutral towards something. But it's something you must love. Then what? Your job would become easy if you start loving it to a certain degree. So now if you think, it's not the best job that I could get, but mashallah it pays well, and it lets me sustain in this climate, you know, sustain myself in this climate and my family. So let me put everything in it. So you start looking at the qualities of this work and you try to gain an affection or an attachment or a connection with the work that you're doing. Likewise, you have to work with somebody. And with some people, you just naturally hit it off. But with other people, it's a bit more difficult. You may enter a class and there's certain teachers you just find a huge amount of harmony with and congeniality with. Their demeanor, your demeanor just matches. And there's others, it's difficult, right? They may be very strict or they may be very laid back or they may be whatever else it could be. But you know that to get through and to be successful, you're going to have to make this work. So you start, how do you make it work? Here, in all of these cases, you need the other type of love. Because you don't have natural love. So in this one, you need hub kasbi. That's the other type of love they say. Hub kasbi. The acquired love. How do you acquire love? You focus on the good points. You focus on the good characteristics. And that is how you acquire love and affection. Or a connection with something at least. Even if it's not affection, it's connection with something. So you think of all of the positives at your work. There may be some negatives. But you think of all of the positives. And that's how you start focusing. That's why they say that even husband and wife relationship, where there's a bit of a disharmony, the point is, and the Prophet ﷺ actually encouraged towards this by saying that a believer should not hate his wife. Because if he is not satisfied with certain characteristics, there will be others that he should be satisfied with. It can't be all bad. Because nothing is all bad except shaitan is all bad. And everything related to shaitan is all bad. Right? Shaitan can never be good, but even human shaitans can actually become good and turn around. So focus on the good aspects. And that's how you create connection with something. And maybe even love of that thing. Now, when you have love for something, then it does a lot of things. So I, I have a friend who's an expert on love. and I mean, this is quite clear that you begin to love something. Now, one thing you have to remember is that when you, if you feel suddenly attracted to something, Think about why you're attracted to that thing. This will give you an understanding. Let's just say 
that it's a, a car you see, man, that looks really nice. Or a house you see, or a, a phone, or some, a person. So it's a man, you see a woman, and you suddenly become attracted to her. What are you being attracted to? It could be many things. It could be her beauty, right? Somebody else may not be. It may be like a cold beauty. It may be a warm beauty. There's different types of beauty, right? You may be attracted to one thing. Somebody may be attracted to another thing. It may be something even more, subhanAllah, I mean, uh, maybe I should just say this clearly. It may be something so insignificant, right? Or something so shallow as the way they walk. Right, literally somebody may become attracted to the opposite because of the way they walk. Because of the way certain body parts are uh, emphasized or something like that. I mean, that, this is as shallow as it gets. And I think, that's it, that's why I want. Why do you want that? Just for one point? That one point? I want to get married to this person because of this. Nobody else I've seen does it that way or wears clothes that way or dresses up that way or puts makeup on that way or has such a car or whatever. Now, is marriage, what is marriage about? Is that what marriage is about? The way somebody walks, the way somebody dresses, the way somebody looks. Is that what marriage is about? You want that for marriage, right? So how can that be? Is that in harmony with marriage? No, not at all. Because marriage is not that you're going to just watch somebody walk or watch the way they dress or put them somewhere and just watch them all day. There's a number of other characteristics that are required in marriage. So you want to get a package. Okay, this one characteristic might be fine, but you need a number of characteristics. What you should give your heart to, what you should give your affection to, your connection to, your association to, should be a package of characteristics. A collection of them, not just one point. This is where people make the biggest mistake. This is the mechanics of love. You become attracted to one characteristic and you think, that's it, that's all I need. You don't. In fact, they don't even know that the, the actual entity becomes cloaked in that one characteristic. It becomes just one characteristic and you don't know. You just start feeling like, that's what I need. You actually don't need that. You need a lot more than that. Because everything else in there could be negative. And that is why they also say something similar, which is that if you become attracted to something and it's unhealthy for you, because if you have, whether that's natural love that you have or you've acquired a love for something haram by bad addiction, an addiction of something bad, that, what essentially a person has done in addiction is that they've focused, focused so much on what they perceive are good characteristics of something and they become infatuated with it and now it's actually become a medical problem a psychological problem because it's an addiction a psychological problem you may actually now hate that thing but it's an addiction now that gets really really crazy so the only way to disassociate from something now is to start focusing on the bad characteristics because it's the good characteristics. Unless it becomes an addiction, that becomes more complicated. But an infatuation, not an addiction, an infatuation, it, the way to help an infatuation is to now start focusing on the bad characteristics. That will start to pull us away from that thing. Now if you put this whole thing, Allah says in the Quran that those who believe they are most intense in their love for Allah, why should they be most intense in their love for Allah? And why aren't we? Well, the reason is that we've not thought of the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way we can become associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is think about His characteristics. That's how you'll get to love Allah. Now, what's really interesting is that the only two things that are absolute good and have no bad whatsoever and it's all good characteristics, just a whole collection of good characteristics and attributes is Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everything associated to them. Everything else has good and bad. So there is no way that if we start learning about Allah, reviewing others' ideas, 
How do you review? How do you get, read a review about Allah? You review Allah in the lives of the pious, their connection with Allah. That's how, that's how you understand it. Then there's no way that that cannot attract us. There's no way that cannot attract us. It's just good quality, good quality, good quality. There are no bad qualities to disassociate us. That's the reason. The reason why we did not know about and we could not see anywhere the first car, the, the second car that we were thinking about, is because we weren't focused on We had another car. So because we got something that is just our security in this world, our safety that we have, our security, our sustenance that we have, Allah has given us so much, that gives us this false attraction away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't see what's essential from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, there's no doubt that anybody who gets closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to know Him, will love Him. But the question is that how do you get to love Him? Well, the way to get to love Him is to learn more about Him. I think the, the most effective ways of getting to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is firstly through the Qur'an, the meaning of the Qur'an. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in action in the Qur'an, speaking to us, how He deals with different people, what He's done for us, what we owe Him. All of his qualities, the, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are found in the Qur'an. The second thing is to actually focus on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we focus on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no way that that cannot attract us. When you're looking for mercy, you're talking about Ya Rahman and Ya Rahim. If, for example, you're, you have a problem with somebody, and somebody's oppressing you. And you're in a situation where somebody's oppressing you. You call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the name Ya Qahar, O overwhelming one, O conqueror, O one with absolute might. You call on to that name. Now imagine it, that you have a particular characteristic, right? You have a particular characteristic, a quality that you're proud of. Somebody can call you by your name, right? Say, um, Maulana Badrul Sab, right? So you can call out his name. He'll be happy with that. But if you get to know Maulana Badrul, right? And you find out how generous he is, and, you know, mashallah, how much concern he has, and all of that, and you say, mashallah, he's, uh, you know, this generous guy here. Does that make you feel good? I mean, somebody said, Mullah Badr, right? And then I said, it's a generous guy. It has a different effect, right? So I can call him Ismail. And this is a really good organizer. Right? He's a very good coordinator. Very hard working. Can you see the effect on that? You're calling out with a characteristic, with a quality. Qualities are very important to people. When you call out to Allah, they, that means, you see, I call out to Ismail. Like Ismail, okay, everybody can call out. Everybody knows his name. But if I call out to a quality, that means I know him better than others. Meaning I know him deeper. There's a deeper meaning there and a deeper connection there. That's why the, although the name Allah is greater than everything else, is greatest name, but it's not the only name. Meaning, He is Allah. That's it. That's His main name. But then all of the qualities He wants us to know because that creates awareness. When we start to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we're doing exactly what He created us for. Allah created certain traditions which tell us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created humanity. And this entire system, this whole world and everything, so that he could be recognized. Otherwise, us being here does nothing else. Just recognition. If you remember in the hell series, there's certain people who are in hellfire. They will call out to Allah. And Allah will actually 
lighten their burden or forgive them because he says, well, you know me. Wow, you know me that I'm very, I'm very forgiving. So he's going to let them go. Because that's what you call ma'rifah. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma'rifah and know, know, knowing him, knowledge of him is one of the greatest things. It's one of the greatest assets that a human being can have. For example, you want expansion in something. Ya wasit, ya basit. You want something, ya wajid. There's so, there's so many names you can use. There's something very subtle, ya latif. Ya razak, if you want sustenance. If you're struggling with sustenance, ya razak. You're calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're worried about safety, ya hafiz. Ya Salam, Ya Hafiz, Ya Salam. Focusing on the name of Allah Subhan, names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, getting to know Him, and then applying them in different aspects of our life will start to make us connected to Allah. And when you love something, you start talking more about it. Although we try to do it the other way, where we try to impose on ourselves a regimen of dhikr, of remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Calling somebody else's name, I don't know if you call somebody else's name the whole day, I don't know if anything will happen. Will you start to love them? You probably will start getting tired of them. Like, why would you even call out their name the whole day? Right? But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, calling them out has actually an efficacy, a benefit. So that you just can't go wrong with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think this is one of the things that we miss. We may pray salat, mashallah, we may fast and everything. But the purpose of all of that was to actually remember Allah and to get to know Him better. To talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the prayer. What He inspires us to do rather. Likewise, to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to then see what He opens up for us in our lives. To go for hajj and go around the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to get to understand and then Allah gives us many, many blessings. So... Let us make it that we can do that. Umar radiallahu anhu once came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, I love you more than everything in this world. All my family, possessions, everything except myself. Just, he was very honest about it. He said, I just love myself more than, more than you. Otherwise, everything else, I love you more. And definitely so, humans love themselves more. You're never going to say, I love myself. But we do everything that we do for ourselves. When people are arrogant, they do it for themselves. When they're blinded of their own defects and they see defects in others, it's because they love themselves. When they justify and they get defensive, no, no, I didn't do that. I'm not like that, even though they are, right? And everybody can say that. And no, no, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. It's because we love ourselves. When you love something, you will defend it. Right? And it blinds you, so we're blinded from our own defects. So he said, look, that's what it is. The Prophet said, no, you're not a complete believer yet. Because complete belief requires more love for Allah and His Messenger than everything else. So he said to Umar, you're not a complete believer yet. Not perfect. He's a believer, but not perfect. You know, the, what, the ascendancy in that. So Umar, after a short while, he says, he says, now, Ya Rasulullah, I actually love you more than even my own self. So the Prophet ﷺ said, now, O Umar, you've reached perfection, completeness. So it's a religious requirement. And Allah and His Messenger are such that the more you know about them, the more you read the seerah, the Qur'an, and the seerah, the more you can just love Allah and His Messenger. There's no way you can escape it. There's other people who fall in love with Allah, not by seeing other Muslims, but by reading the Qur'an. By reading the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, non-Muslims who then eventually become Muslim like that. So, all we can do is to ask Allah to facilitate this path for us and make it easy for us, so that we don't, we're not veiled from Him. We're not veiled from Him by being infatuated with other things in this world, so that we don't see the effects of Allah, the signs of Allah, the names of Allah everywhere. May Allah give us that tawfiq wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak tiyatun jalali wa likram. 
اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم يا حنان يا منان لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين يا معدن الجود والكرم يا أكرم الأكرمين يا خير المسؤولين ويا خير المعطين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واهدنا وارزقنا اللهم عافنا اللهم اشفنا اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لأمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله have your mercy on us يا الله we invoke your mercy your generosity your benevolence يا الله your forgiveness we ask you for your forgiveness we are sitting in this house of yours <coughs> Oh Allah, on this day we are sitting in this house of yours. You allowed us to be here. You allowed us to spend time here. You allowed us to remember you. Ya Allah, you allowed us to understand some of your characteristics, some of your beautiful names. You allowed us to raise our hands to you. You accepted us for Iman. You accepted us to be your slaves. Oh Allah, we are your slaves. You have made us your slaves. We can't be anything else. Oh Allah, now that you've allowed us to be in the masjid and to raise our hands to you, oh Allah, accept it from us. Oh Allah, accept our du'as. We see this as a sign that you want to give us. Oh Allah, allow us to be closer to you. Oh Allah, grant us your love and the love of those whose love will benefit us in your court. Do not distract us from you. Oh Allah, do not allow us to be distracted from you by everything else. Oh Allah, our love for everything else needs to be for your sake. O oh Allah, our love for everything else needs to be for your sake. O oh Allah, allow us to have pure love for you. O oh Allah, allow us to be bl blinded of everything else in your love, but to love everything for your sake, to fulfill our responsibilities. O oh Allah, to fulfill our responsibilities. O oh Allah, grant us afiyat. O oh Allah, grant us your blessings. O oh Allah, grant us your rahmah, your mercy. Protect us, our generations. O oh Allah, make us all of the muqeemeen as salat make us, all of, make us of those who establish your prayer. Allow us before, our die, uh, before we die to not have any balance of missed prayers to our name or missed fast to our name. Allow us to complete these things and go from this world free of any debt. O oh Allah, allow us to repay our debts to others if we owe them. O oh Allah, allow us to repay and to absolve ourselves from all other forms of claims that may be against us from other people. O oh Allah, grant us exoneration in this world and especially in the hereafter from hellfire and especially from the demands of others. O oh Allah, do not allow us to oppress others and allow us to find forgiveness for us oppressing anyone else for, or for having done them a wrong or not being able to fulfill their rights. O oh Allah, make us true insan, true complete beings. O oh Allah, make your love and the love of your messenger higher and more important for us than everything else. O oh Allah, grant us greater awareness of you, greater understanding of you. O oh Allah, that is why you created us. O oh Allah, allow us to fulfill the reason for our creation. Allow us to fulfill the reason and the purpose of our creation. O oh Allah, bless all of those who are here today and who are listening. O oh Allah, bless the entire world, O oh Allah, bless the entire world with closeness to you. O oh Allah, we ask that you send your abundant blessings on our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that you bless us in what you have given us and do not allow it, us to use whatever you have given us to use it in your disobedience, O oh Allah, but rather allow us to use it in your obedience and allow us to be of service to your faith and service to others. So, سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين. The point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam, and to understand all the subjects of Islam at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our Deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic 
Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules. And at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind, you can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.